one of the commonest problems I have to deal with um, is dogs being reactive towards other dogs. So, you take your dog to the church hall, the scout hall, the community centre, you teach your dog how to sit, how to lie down, how to stand, wait, stay. And over several weeks, time, over several weeks, the dog starts to get used to the dogs that are in the group. So everything is working fine. However, it all starts to fall apart when you take your dog to the local park or to the beach where he doesn't know the dogs that he is surrounded with, where he doesn't know these individuals that are running up to him and allegedly only wanting to play. The problem is you haven't taught your dog to do all the things you've been taught at your training class in all the different circumstances and situations you're going to put your dog in. So your dog has to learn that distractions are not important. You have to condition your dog to pay attention and to focus on you at all times. So what we're going to do now, we're going to put Indy in the middle of a whole bunch of other dogs, running through his paces, and see how much attention and focus he will give to me. A term some dog owners may not have heard of is generalisation. Generalisation occurs when a dog displays a trained behaviour in an environment other than the environment the dog has learned that particular behaviour in. This means that if you attend a training group and you teach your dog the conventional controls sit, down, stand, stay, wait, walk nicely by his side, come to you when called in that particular environment you can't assume that your dog will display those behaviours wherever you take it. The problems may start to appear when you take your dog to the park, the field, beach and do what most people do, is let their dog off the lead, then try and control their dog using the controls the dog has learned in another environment, without considering the dog's individual drive, motivation, or breed-specific behaviours. Over the years, I've had lots of people bring their dogs to me that have attended other training groups, and the story is always the same. My dog is brilliant in the training class, but outside of the class, the dog is a nightmare. This is because the perception of dog training by many people is I'll just set my dog to a training school, teach it a few things and everything will be fine. Or the owners have brought the dog due to inappropriate behaviour at home. Attend the class for several weeks, see no improvement in the dog's behaviour at home and just stop attending. If you're having problems at home, you need to deal with those problems at home. Taking it somewhere else will have very little effect on the dog's underlying behaviour. The perception is that a few controls will stop the dog doing certain things. And unfortunately with a lot of owners, that is to stop the dog displaying typical canine behaviour. Dogs are dogs and they will do what dogs do, unless the relationship you build with them teaches the dog that it's always more of an advantage to engage with you, the owner, rather than run off and do their own thing. So wherever you intend to take your dog on a daily basis, you have to put your dog through the basic controls to ensure that you continue to build a relationship and the dog learns how to behave in that particular environment. Some of the important things you'll need to remember when starting to generalize your dog's behavior are, you must use exactly the same verbal cues and physical signals that you were taught at your training group. Changing the way you interact with your dog will cause the dog to interact with you in a different manner. It's vitally important to continue with the positive elements associated with your training. In the main, that would be food rewards. Many people ask me, when can I stop giving food rewards? Well, my answer to that is never. You should continue to reward your dog for appropriate behavior, but start to be a bit more selective as to the number of times you reward. Intermittent rewards are more beneficial to a dog than constant rewards. Lots of dogs fail to achieve because owners give up. They think their dogs are stupid or will not listen. Firstly, dogs are not stupid. However, some dogs may prove to be more of a challenge to engage with than others. Taking your dog to the park and letting it off the lead to check how effective its recall is, is madness. Train recall in exactly the same way as you've been taught at your training group in the new environment 
until your dog understands that they have to carry out this particular skill in a variety of locations. When you're starting on the process of generalization, you have to lower your expectations and realize you're now working in a new environment and the likelihood is that you'll have to start again. However, it shouldn't take as long as it took to get to the same stage at your initial training group. When you take your dog to different environments and locations, it's extremely important that the dog continues to focus and engage with you, the owner. Here we have Indy continuing to engage with me surrounded by a group of dogs who have come to me with a variety of behavioural issues. Unlike the majority of owners in this group, I didn't have the benefit of working with Indy when he was a few weeks old. He came to me at 18 months old with significant issues, those being overstimulation, lack of impulse control and attention addiction. This meant that he would lunge and jump at any and every dog and person he could get close enough to and at 30 kilograms, he was a real handful. Now, Indy is not a highly trained competition obedience dog. I don't require that amount of attention to detail. However, I do expect him to pay attention and engage with me in all and every situation. 